in English, wicked has two meanings. Uh, one is quite a positive meaning, uh, which is saying that something is excellent or wonderful. You know, you might say, oh, mate, that's a wicked bike. And you're saying, that's a, that's a nice bike, you know, that's a good bike. Or if you're saying, you know, he was wicked when he took his bike. Wicked is like, you know, it's bad. It's um, something that's evil or morally wrong, like you could describe Hitler as wicked. So they're two pretty much polar opposites, if you will. They're all, almost one meaning of the word is an antonym of the other meaning of the word. So in this sense, I think it's quite clever that the London Dungeon has used the word wicked because of this double meaning. Because I think that Boudicca was both wicked in the sense of that she was very interesting and, and nice to sort of look at. Well, not nice to look at as in like a an attractive way but nice to look at in a historical way is as, as in she's an interesting character to study and wicked in the way of being uh, inhumane to civilians and prisoners it's hard for us in the 21st century to look at Boudicca in anything but a sympathetic light and this may be in part due to the Victorian romanticization of everything Celtic. Now the Victorian era was an age in which nations sought to find their national identity and to do this they would look back to their nation's past. Um, it was also a way of sort of getting a one up over the other empires over their neighbours and saying look what our ancestors did, that kind of thing you know. Um, so with the rise of empires such as the British, Dutch and French, there came a sense of pride in not only the current state of the nation, but also in their nation's past. Uh, the erection of statues in France of the great Gaulish resistance leader Vercingetorix, and in Germany of the Cheruski chieftain Arminius, who orchestrated the defeat of the Roman army at the Teutoburger Forest, and indeed the statue of Boudicca built in Westminster, are all examples of people in this era looking back to the past to find their national identity. Um, it's also in this era that the revival of many of these old languages and customs starts to take place. So you have things like the, I believe it's called the Celtic or the other Gallic society being formed in this era to sort of look back and say, you know, these were our ancestors, these were their languages, so we should go back and honour this. In fact, when the old Dutch Republic fell in 1795, the new French-aligned government of the Netherlands called itself the Batas Republiek, or Batavian Republic, after the Germanic tribes that had lived in the Netherlands at the time of the Romans. Fun fact, Hadrian's Wall was built in, in part by the Batavians. Because of this, our image of the Celts, and therefore the Britons, who were a Celtic people, um, is skewed. The Victorians painted the Britons with a noble savage brush, just as they did with the Native Americans in Europe in around the 1860s. The Celts were the proud and majestic people that nobly fought against the tyrannical power of Rome in a glorious last stand of free will against the iron fist of imperial dominion. The truth is rather, rather less straightforward, as it often is. The Britons, and indeed the Iceni, were happily fighting and murdering other tribes centuries before the Romans arrived, so they were no strangers to barbarism, war, or subjugating neighbours. You know just as the Native Americans were busy killing each other before the Europeans got there. Nobody's perfect. On the other hand, the Romans were an occupying force in Britain. They had not been invited by the locals, and they, through superior command and technology, managed to subdue the local people and ban them into following their will. I should say bend. They used rapine and savagery as a means to belittle and enslave the local population, as well as pitting them against their neighbour for their own good. They took what land they wanted and forced the locals off the country where their ancestors had lived for centuries. Sound familiar? It should. Told you there was a lot to be linking to the Native Americans. A lot of the commentators on the London Dungeon Post were really quite angry about Boudicca being called wicked. And words like disappointed and blaming the patriarchy and extremely disrespectful were being used to describe the London Dungeon's choice of vocabulary. People do get very defensive over Boudicca. People who have or believe they have Celtic ancestry because she is a symbol of Celtic power in the face of a mighty invader. She is often shown in tartan with blue Pictish war paint and long flowing red hair. In other words, the classic Celt or the classic image of a Celt in the 21st century. Furthermore, she is seen as a sort of last hussar for the Celts. After Boudicca's revolt in 61 AD, the Celts have had their heyday of the late Iron Age, and from that point on they were subjected to Roman rule followed by the invasion and possible assimilation by the Germanic tribes in the 7th century. For feminists, she is a strong icon, the image of a strong independent woman who has suffered at the hands of the patriarchal society of Rome, and now incites her revenge into them. Onto them. 
Many on the post claimed that the label was only being placed on her because she was a woman and was in fact an impact of the patriarchal society. I disagree with this. Um, I think it's more likely that being a woman actually helped Boudicca become as famous as she is today. Boudicca is, at least in the UK, a household name. Um, but no one has ever heard of Karatakus uh, before, you know. Maybe you have if you're, if you're into this period of history, but you say Boudicca and you get a reaction in people. You know, people see this flaming Celtic female warrior, king, queen, king? Uh, queen, queen, riding on a chariot, you know, going into battle, defeating the Romans, you know, British hero, heroine, even. I'm not good at this today. However, you say Karatikus and they, they look at you and you're like, you what, fam? You know, no one's ever heard of this guy, but why? Because Karatikus was a British king who fought against the Roman invasion of Britain, and unlike Boudicca, who only managed to hold out against the Romans for a year, he managed to fight on for a decade fighting and winning several pitched battles and guerrilla style attacks on the invader. I think Boudicca is more remembered than these because of the fact that she is a woman. Not saying that's a bad thing because she's a fascinating character and it's great to look back at the history of the revolt and why it happened and how different the, the role and position of women was in Celtic and Roman society, but I think in this case the patriarchy card really needs to stay inside the pact because no one really today in the United Kingdom has heard of Karatikus, who did a much better job than Boudicca, historically and militarily speaking, and he's just forgotten and Boudicca is remembered. Now, why is that? I'm saying a possible reason is because Boudicca was a female, she stood out more from people in the time because most war leaders at the time were males. So I'm saying in this case, it actually worked in Boudicca's favor that she was remembered because she was a female. Takitus says in the annals that the number massacred and the places which have been mentioned amounted to no less than 70,000, all citizens or allies of Rome. Now it's important to remember again that these are the civilian non-combatants and not soldiers being massacred. So these are people that have come over maybe from um, the Roman province of Gaul, some from the, the northern Italian provinces. Uh, they've gone over to Britain and settled there and many of these people would be Britons that they killed. They weren't all Romans. Now they specifically targeted Romans but say you're, I don't know, a Briton lad and you meet a nice Italian lass and you get married and you have two kids. These guys, Boudicca's army wouldn't care, you'd all get the sword. That's, it's pretty grim. It's not nice. They pretty much killed anyone who was in any way Roman. So you wore Roman clothes, get the chop. You know, you're seen as a Roman. You're working with the invader. You're a collaborator, in other words. Um, a rather grim point that my dad actually mentioned to me while I was discussing it with him is that this is basically ethnically cleansing. We don't like to say it, and when you hear <laughs> think of Boudicca, you don't think of ethnic cleansing. But in essence, when they took St Albans, Colchester and London, that's what they did. They killed all the Romans they could find, and anyone that sort of related to the Romans and was seen as Roman was put to the sword and killed. Now, although many of the British warriors uh, pillaged and abused Celtic and Roman, uh, Ro Roman, Roman alike, Boudicca and her army specifically targeted Roman families and had them put to death in terrible ways. In essence, she was trying to wipe out every Roman, man, woman and child in Britain. Tacitus goes on to write, The halter and the gibbet, slaughter and defoliation, fire and sword, were the marks of savage valour, and then, to make sure of their revenge, and glut themselves with the blood of their enemies. Well, this has been my video on Boudicca and my response to the initial post by the London Dungeon and some of the commenters. I hope you've enjoyed it and I would really like to hear your thoughts on the matter. Did you agree with what I said? Did you disagree? Um, what, what are your opinions? Should Boudicca be called wicked? Were they justified? in calling Boudicca wicked. Let's get a let's get a discussion going because I, I think this is a really interesting topic and I hope you guys do as well. So like, comment, subscribe and stay tuned for more History with Hilbert.